this is going to be the most unprofessional grave video you've ever seen on YouTube or anywhere ever. How's it going everyone? Michael here. So I haven't gone far today. I'm literally five minutes from my house and locally this is known as Cemetery Junction but I'm in a Bournemouth Cemetery today. And it's one of the older ones. There's actually another cemetery slash crematorium which is known as Bournemouth Crematorium which is about a mile and a half up the road but I'm in here. Bournemouth Cemetery and today I'm here for a grave that not many people may have heard of unless you're a fan of Jack the Ripper. Now if you're a fan of true crime and you've watched anything at all on the craze you'll know that they had a police officer nemesis, one person that was never going to give up by the name of Nipper Reed. Now I'm not here for anything to do with uh, the craze on Nipper Reed but Jack the Ripper had his own Nipper Reed and he went by the name Frederick Abalone. Frederick Abalone was born on the 8th of January 1843 in Blandford Forum. Now Blandford is probably 45 minutes to an hour drive from where I am today but I don't need to go that far because he left Blandford, went to the Metropolitan Police where he was he had a good career there from what I can work out and was made inspector. Now if you've watched anything to do with Jack the Ripper or even if you're a fan of Johnny Depp you might have seen the film From Hell where Johnny Depp actually plays Frederick Aberline in the film you'll know the name. Now if you just mentioned Inspector Frederick Aberline to somebody in the street who's not a fan. Well, say a fan. That might be the wrong word. Not someone who has looked into Jack the Ripper or watched the documentaries on it or followed any stories or anything like that. You're not going to know who he is. So this video is probably for people who have just come across it, finding out for the first time. Or you just might be a big Ripper fan like the majority of us are. Inspector Avalon was married twice. His first wife in 1868, uh, a lady called Martha, she died three months after uh, their marriage from tuberculosis. And later on, he married another lady. I've actually got, I've actually had to write it down now, Emma Beaumont in 1876. And he actually stayed with her until his death. He died here in Bournemouth. And after some digging around, I've actually found his house where he died. We'll go there in a bit. Look at that church. Absolutely amazing. So let's just go for a walk now. This is actually a really nice peaceful uh, little walk here. What I'm going to try and do is not directly film any headstones or anything like that that's not linked, not linked to this video for the simple fact of the, the privacy of, uh, of other families. So Frederick was a clo uh, cloak maker and he left his home in Blandford and moved up to London where he joined the Metropolitan Police. Now I would assume back then it wasn't a job many people actually wanted to do but we'll never know why he decided to, uh, to join the police I suppose. What a guy. But after his, I can actually see the grave from here now. We're almost at the Aberline grave right now. Now the actual headstone wasn't installed here until 2007 and this was basically down to uh, Ripper fans and bits and pieces like that and then there was uh, a big petition to sort of get one done. The surviving family members agreed and a local stonemason, I don't know who it was, I did look, but I couldn't find anything concrete on it because two different company names was brought up. But they donated the headstone for him and they've done a really good job. It's really, really nice. Now, obviously, he had a good police career, obviously getting up to inspector. But it was 
the Ripper murders that really catapulted this guy into the limelight. One thing I've always wondered is we all know, well, I say, we, oh my God, someone just really fucking shit me up walking over there. I want to keep this filming. I've just heard that this, the cemetery is actually locked. I'm not sure how this person got in because uh, I had to do some negotiation with a fence. So there must be a way in. Just seeing her walk in, just in the background there. Now I'm not sure why, but it's all, all the, the gates are all closed here today. So as it's only a, a little wall, I just quickly jumped over in order to make this video. And I thought I was the only person in the cemetery until I heard a little, little rustle when I turned around and there's an old lady standing there. That shit me up, fucking hell. Right, she's actually going over to the Abilene grave. Well, in that direction. So I'm just gonna come down here and we'll have a little chat just until she goes. Cause if she is visiting a family member, how did even she get in? Cause I went around and all the, whatever, it's done. Where was I? Right, getting back on it now. Sorry, I'm going a bit off track here. This isn't going to be one of the most professional videos on celebrity graves or bits and pieces like that. I'm not Scott on tape, you know. I'm not Paul from Unusual Things. He's fucking good. Paul's really, really good. I'd like to meet him one day. But just getting back to it now. So, Frederick Abilene, he's put in charge of the Jack the Ripper murders. And he got a body part in a box with the now incredibly famous letter dear boss so I, did jack the ripper know who this guy was did jack the ripper read the newspapers or did somebody read the papers for him i'm going on the assumption until i'm told otherwise that jack the ripper was you know surgically trained I'm not necessarily thinking of the uh, the From Hell storyline with the Royals, but maybe someone who just knew what they were doing. So if they knew what they were doing, maybe he could read. So was he reading the newspapers? Did he read the name, Inspector Frederick Aberline? He wrote to him. So the grave I'm going to now, for me, apart from the Ripper victims, Jack the Ripper knew who this guy was. Did he pass Frederick Abilene in the street? Did he watch him coming in and out of the police station? Did he return to a crime scene and watch them do the investigation? It's interesting. I find it really, really interesting. I just want this lady to, uh, to go. She's definitely walking off now. Um, are we going to go down now to, to Frederick's grave and then afterwards we're going to go to the house where he died okay so I'm just going to walk up to the grave now so <clears throat> from what I understood it was retired Metropolitan Police and local historians and historians in London that all got together and decided that they wanted to mark the grave and they did and this is the grave just up here but they didn't just also get a marker for him and his wife they got a really nice blue plaque put outside of his house so we can see and people can recognize his final place and this is his grave If you wanted to find uh, the Abilene grave, he's actually just on the perimeter, near the perimeter wall. Just over there is the church. So you walk around the path from the church and then you'll see this mausoleum uh, just here. Just follow the wall and it'll go down to a non-wall here. And then where that tree is there, 
right there is the Abilene Grave. I came across it about 12 years ago by complete uh, coincidence when I was doing some paranormal stuff here. Um, and then a few years later when I came back, I couldn't actually find it, but that's where it is. So it's, it's next to the big tree there. You've got the two trees here and it's literally, where's my finger? It's literally that one right there. Now, as I've said, I'm not a professional vlogger. I have a job outside of doing my YouTube. I've got a family. And I'm going to the gym as well now, but I'm not going to film that. But uh, <clears throat> I got my inspiration for originally from watching Scott on tape. And while I was in America, I went to the Westwood Cemetery and uh, did a video there. That was my first ever real one. But I do like watching the videos of everyone, especially uh, Paul from uh, Unusual Things. He's a really, really good channel. You should go and check him out. I'm not being paid to say that, by the way. I'm just a fan of the channel. <laughs> yeah, so, you know, I'm just a guy with the Sony ZV-1 that likes to film stuff. And as this stuff's literally on my doorstep, why not? Okay, people, we're now going to go down to uh, Frederick Aberline's former home, which is now being converted into flats. So it's going to be easier for me really to pull up onto the driveway and film rather than just walking on a private driveway, which I thought it was going to be. The blue plaque is outside. Um, I took a drive past this morning. There is a blue plaque there. I've never been up, so this will be a first for me as maybe for some people that are watching this video now. So this here is his former house, 195 Holdenhurst Road. Back then, when he lived there, this was a very nice area to be. Now, it's an absolute shit up. But this is the blue plaque. I do believe, I did hear, he actually died in this front room right here. Back then, it was known as Escort. This is the plaque. During his 29 years with the Metropolitan Police, Abilene gained 84 commendations and awards and became well known for his work on the, Jack, the case of Jack the Ripper. So this is the end of my little video of unprofessionalness, but this is it. Now it was that room there, I'm told it was this one uh, that he died in, but uh, I don't think we'll ever really know. For more information, should you want it, on Inspector Aberline, there's loads of stuff online and there's some really good stories about him. I'm not going to stand here and read stuff off of a phone off of a script like a lot of channels do uh, for you. That's entirely up to you if you want to go and, uh, and do that yourself. I just like the raw upfront footage. So if you like the video, please like and subscribe and I'll see you in another video sometime soon. Take care guys, bye bye.